In this tutorial, you'll learn how to find derivatives of functions that are divided by each other. But first, do you remember the product rule for derivatives? If you have two functions, f and g, what's the derivative of f times g? The product rule tells us that the derivative of the product of two functions is equal to the first function times the derivative of the second one plus the second function times the derivative of the first one. Which answer choice does that look like? Right, the derivative of f of x times g of x equals f times the derivative of g plus g times the derivative of f. Okay. Now let's move on to quotients. Quotient is a fancy word for the result you get when dividing one number by another. So let's divide f of x by g of x, and we'll find the derivative of this quotient. We can rewrite this derivative as a limit of some expression over h as h goes to zero. What's the missing numerator in this limit? A derivative is always the limit as h goes to zero, of y, some function y evaluated at x plus h, minus that function y evaluated at x. Here, that function is a quotient. It's f over g, so y of x here. The thing we're taking a derivative is f of x divided by g of x. That means that y of x plus h is just f of x plus h divided by g of x plus h. If you plug that in to that limit down there, what do you get? Right. The numerator is this whole function evaluated at x plus h, so that's f of x plus h over g of x plus h, minus f of x over g of x. Next, what's an equivalent expression for this numerator that you just found? We want to add these two fractions, or subtract them here, and to do that we need to find a common denominator. The common denominator is g of x times g of x plus h. So to get this denominator in the first fraction, you have to multiply it by g of x divided by g of x. That's 1 in the form of g of x over g of x. To get the common denominator in the second fraction, you have to multiply it by g of x plus h over g of x plus h. If you do that multiplication and then add the fractions, or subtract them, what do you get? Exactly. Let's quickly see how you got that. We want these two fractions to have the same denominator. So we can multiply the first one by g of x over g of x, and the second one by g of x plus h over g of x plus h. If we swap the places of these two functions here, we now see that these fractions have the same denominator. So we can combine them into one fraction. This expression is now the difference up here, divided by g of x times g of x plus h, then divided again by h. So we can move the g of x times g of x plus h into the denominator down here. Now let's turn this into two limits by pulling out the g of x times g of x plus h in the denominator and making it a separate limit as h goes to zero. We can do this because of the limit rules for multiplication. Now, assuming g is continuous, can you evaluate this highlighted limit on the left? If g is a continuous function, that means the limit as h goes to zero of g of x plus h is just g of x. As the input gets closer and closer to x, the output is going to get closer and closer to g of x. That's what a continuous function is. Why don't you try using that limit along with limit rules to evaluate this limit here? Right. 
If g is continuous, then you can plug in 0 for h, and this limit equals 1 over g of x squared. Let's move this term up here for now, and turn our attention to the remaining limit over here. Let's make some space here, and what we'll do is subtract and add f of x times g of x. Because we subtracted and added the same thing here, we're not changing the overall value of this expression. Notice that the first two terms here have a g of x in them. Let's factor it out, so we have g of x times f of x plus h minus f of x. And notice that these two terms on the right here have an f of x in them. Next, try factoring out the f of x. Then see if you can further simplify this expression by breaking it up into multiple limits. You can do this. Let's first focus on these two terms here. If we factor out the f of x, we're left with f of x times g of x minus g of x plus h. Now something that'll help is to actually factor out a minus sign. So this is equal to minus f of x times g of x plus h minus g of x. Why do we want to do that? Well, when we have derivatives, we usually have a function evaluated at x plus h minus a function evaluated at x. If we do that simplification, this whole thing becomes minus f of x times g of x plus h minus g of x. Why don't you try to simplify it further and see if you can get to the answer. Okay, so far we've simplified this box here to minus f of x times g of x plus h minus g of x. Now we can write this as two separate fractions. We can take the h, move it over here and over here, now we have two fractions that are being subtracted. If we distribute the limit sign, what we have is the limit is h goes to 0 of g of x times f of x plus h minus f of x, all divided by h, minus the limit as h goes to 0 of f of x times g of x plus h minus g of x, all divided by h. Now, this g of x doesn't have an h in it, so we can bring it in front, and this f of x also doesn't have an h in it, so we can bring that in front. Can you simplify the resulting limits? So far we've said that this big expression here in the box can be written as g of x times the limit as h goes to 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x all divided by h minus f of x times a similar limit involving g. Now you'll recognize that this limit here is the definition of f prime of x and this limit here is the definition of g prime of x. So we can write that thing in the box as g times f prime minus f times g prime. Now remember, we still have a g squared in the denominator here, so the final answer is going to be g times f prime minus f times g prime, we'll put that in parentheses, all divided by g squared. Nicely done. That one was pretty tricky. First, you rearrange these terms over here to get minus f of x times g of x plus h minus g of x. Then you broke this fraction up into two fractions, both with the same denominator h. By making this two limits, and then pulling out g of x from the first one and f of x from the second one, you got this expression, g times the derivative of f minus f times the derivative of g. Let's move this expression up here and we can move it into the numerator of this fraction. You know that g is a function of x, so let's just write the denominator as g squared. And that's it. The derivative of f over g equals g times the derivative of f minus f times the derivative of g over g squared. 
Try using this formula to find the derivative of the tangent of x. Here are some derivatives you found earlier that can help you here. The derivative of sine x equals cosine x, and the derivative of cosine x equals minus sine x. One thing that'll help is to remember that the tangent of x is equal to the sine of x over the cosine of x. The tangent is sine of x over the cosine of x. So what we're trying to find is the derivative with respect to x of the tangent, which I'm going to write as the sine of x, divided by the cosine of x. Now we can use the quotient rule. This is f, the numerator, and this is g, the denominator. Great job! Now, this formula can be tricky to remember. So here's a mnemonic that can help you. First, let's call the numerator high, because it's high up in this fraction. And the denominator we'll call low, because it's at the bottom of this fraction. With these labels, the expression for the derivative becomes low d high minus high d low over low squared. The d's here mean you're taking the derivative of what comes after them. So this is low times the derivative of high minus high times the derivative of low. You can memorize this formula as long as you remember the expression low d high minus high d low over low squared. Here we'll find the derivatives of negative powers two different ways. So suppose you want to find the derivative of a negative power, like x to the minus fourth. Here we'll find out how to do that. But first, what's an equivalent way of writing x to the minus fourth? Positive powers mean you multiply by x over and over again. Negative powers mean you divide by x over and over again. So when you see x to the minus four, it means you're dividing by x four times, so you could write that as 1 over x to the fourth. Right. x to the minus fourth is the same thing as 1 over x to the fourth. Looking at this expression here, it seems to be the derivative of the function y equals 1 over another function, x to the fourth. So we should be able to use the quotient rule to find the derivative of this expression. Do you remember the quotient rule for derivatives? If you have two functions, f and g, what's an equivalent expression for the derivative of f over g? This rule is probably worth memorizing. If you've forgotten it, go back and check out the tutorials on the quotient rule. Whenever you want to take the derivative of a fraction like this, you take the denominator times the derivative of the numerator, and then you subtract the numerator times the derivative of the denominator. Finally, you divide that whole thing by the denominator squared. Exactly. The derivative of f over g equals g times the derivative of f minus f times the derivative of g all over g squared. So that's the quotient rule for derivatives. Now try using it to find the derivative of 1 over x to the fourth. 1 over x to the fourth here is a quotient, and when we're taking the derivative of a quotient, we can use the quotient rule. First, we have to identify what f and g are for this expression. f is the numerator, so here f of x is equal to 1. g is the denominator, so g of x is equal to x to the fourth. For the quotient rule, we're also going to need f prime and g prime. What's f prime of x? Well, the derivative of a constant is always 0, so f prime is 0. And g prime of x is going to be 4 times x cubed. Using these expressions for f, g, f prime, and g prime, 
why don't you try using the quotient rule to figure out the derivative of 1 over x to the fourth? If we plug our expressions for f, g, f prime, and g prime into the quotient rule, we find that the derivative is equal to g times f prime, which is x to the fourth times zero, minus f times g prime, which is one times four x cubed, all divided by g squared, which is x to the fourth squared. The zero times x to the fourth goes away, and we're left with negative four x cubed on top, and x to the eighth on the bottom, because x to the fourth squared is x to the eighth. If we simplify the exponents of x, we're left with negative four divided by x to the fifth. Great job. Let's see how you got that. g represents the function on the bottom, so that's x to the fourth. f is the function on the top, which is one, and the derivative of the function y equals one is zero. So let's replace this f prime here with a zero. f we already said is one in this example, and g prime means the derivative of x to the fourth, which you correctly figured out is four x cubed. Finally, we can replace the g in the denominator with x to the fourth. Now let's simplify this expression. x to the fourth times zero is zero, so we can get rid of this term. And minus one times four x cubed is minus four x cubed. In the denominator, when raising a power to another power, we can multiply the two exponents. So x to the fourth squared equals x to the eighth. And finally, we can cancel out the x cubed in the numerator with three powers of x in the denominator, leaving us with x to the fifth in the denominator. So using the quotient rule, you've found that the derivative of one over x to the fourth equals minus four over x to the fifth. Now let's try finding this derivative a different way. The minus four up here is a negative power, but it's still a power. So let's try using the rule for derivatives of powers. What's the formula you use for finding the derivative of x to the nth power? If n is equal to five, you know the derivative of x to the fifth is equal to five times x to the fourth, where we brought the five down in front and decreased it by one. Which of the answer choices give you five x to the fourth when n is equal to five? Right, the derivative of x to the n is n times x to the n minus one. We've previously shown that this rule works for positive whole numbers, but what about for negative powers, like x to the minus four? Well, try applying this rule up here to find the derivative of x to the minus four. In order to use this rule here, we just need to figure out what n is. In this problem, we're taking the derivative of x to the minus four, so n is minus four. How do we take this derivative? Well, the derivative of x to the minus four is just gonna be n times x to the n minus one. And all you have to do now is plug in the value of n there and there to get the answer. Okay, so you got minus four times x to the minus four minus one and minus four minus one is minus five. So using this rule up here, you found that the derivative of x to the minus four equals minus four times x to the minus fifth. Now what's an equivalent way to write minus four times x to the minus fifth? X to the minus five is another way of writing one divided by x to the five. So minus four times x to the minus five is equal to minus four times one over x to the five. Nicely done. Using this rule up here, you found that the derivative of x to the minus four equals minus four over x to the fifth, just like you found over here. Using two different methods, the derivative rule for powers and the quotient rule, 
you got the same result for the derivative of x to the minus 4. So now you know that you can confidently use this power rule when n is a positive whole number, a negative whole number, and it even works when n is 0. This rule works for any integer value of n. But does it work for powers that aren't whole numbers, like 1 half minus 17.2 or pi? Stay tuned. You'll find out in a later tutorial.